So it's only been a day since I last played Airship Escort, and I already miss it, guys. I gotta be honest with you, I'm pretty disappointed with this update since they took away such an awesome game mode. I just love how this game mode, even looking back at this as I'm recording this, it's so cool how we're forced to push across the map in a very specific way, forcing us to use different islands, opening up the maps, allowing for flanks, pushing. It's so nice. Um, and we happen to get 13,000 damage with HE. Don't uh, don't sleep on Monty HE, I guess. Uh, but we'll definitely be using AP for most of this game. We're gonna have a really awesome time here. Flanking the enemy team, since they aren't actually going to pay too much attention to this one, two, three line. And we're gonna capitalize on that massively. Montana, of course, is excellent at punishing broadsides. And that's what we're gonna get most of this game. I just really miss this game mode already. Just seeing how the maps play out here again while recording this video, compared to some of the games that I've played, everyone seems to be playing at their max gun range and staying there in random battles. And I can't really blame them, because that's really what you have to do these days to mitigate damage at high tier. Everything is quite accurate and very deadly out to their maximum gun range these days. We have a lot of early spotting as well, thanks to a lot of very fast ships, but also carriers with their plane spotting. Where here, yeah, there were carriers in some of these games, but it felt like people were pushing up more. There was more interesting engagements thanks to people using different islands and being forced to push along a specific path with airship escort. I really hope that Wargaming brings this one back because I had so much fun this last month playing World of Warships and I'm very, very sad to see it go. I'm going to have to figure out how to have fun in random battles in a similar way where I can take advantage of alternate pushing routes and not just feel like every match is sniping from my spawn to the enemy's spawn. Right now, that's kind of how I'm feeling about random battles and it's a little bit disappointing, uh, but hopefully I can figure something out a little bit different there. Perhaps it's just not playing battleships. That's probably also a good idea. Play some DDs. There's always some great opportunities to use stealth with your destroyers. And maybe that's going to be a lot better in this coming up month for me. As you can see, we're already doing pretty good this game. Up to 62,000 damage. Montana is one of those tier 10 battleships that really is just that jack of all trades. If you're looking for a beginner battleship, it's just very good in a lot of different scenarios. Monty's up there. It certainly is not the most meta ship. It doesn't have the overmatch like a lot of ships have these days. It doesn't have the reload a lot of ships have these days. But what it does do is it's very tanky and it's very consistent relative to some of the other battleships at its tier. It doesn't rely on as many gimmicks and really the tankiness is quite a big deal. Where this game we are going to use a lot of our HP. But thanks to those gigantic heals, you notice they are much bigger than a standard heal on a normal battleship. Feeling back nearly 24,000 HP every time. And we have five of those. So we're not quite a conqueror, uh, but certainly we are able to do some good work in the Montana. And I'm just chilling here, waiting. I knew the Kitakaze was on his way, so I just wanted to stay near this rock. And our Hugumo is going to help us out a ton here, freeing up this flank for us to push. I was really waiting for this Kitakaze um, to start pushing. We load HE with Expert Loader. It's very easy to swap over to the HE, and we only get 3.3k damage out of four hits. Uh, so that's pretty disappointing <laughs> considering four hits with armor piercing, which will always do overpen damage, would be over, what, 5,000 damage? <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's not the best idea to swap to the HE. It's kind of odd where battleships should be encouraged to swap to HE and then get rewarded for it with big damage. Uh, that it doesn't always happen thanks to saturation or hitting just different elements on the ship, right? If you hit a module, not really going to do much damage to the hull. Unfortunately, the Schlieffen gets away with one here, although we've done reasonably well up to this point, and we're going to have much better salvos in the future. So if you dud salvos, it's not the end of the world, although it would be nice to consistently smack some of these broadsides. The Schlieffen does have to go, though. He is very much a dangerous threat here. Especially on this map where the paths are so close together for the airships and you don't really want to be fighting Schlieffen in close quarters. Another sal salvo we miss, unfortunately, um, but I think the next one is going to be much better. As you can see, people seem to be playing much more close range here. We'll be getting into a lot of random battles videos in the next couple of weeks. And just keep a mental note of how pushed up people are in this game mode. 
and how much brawling and action there actually is here. I really, really do miss it. As you can see, there you go. Double strike from that enemy Schlieffen. Um, perhaps this game would have been a little bit easier had I actually landed some of those salvos. Although here we go. Good dispersion. Finally, we'll get a Citadel, right? No. No, we don't get a Citadel. But we do get actually some pretty decent damage into his broadside. And I think that some of the consistency that I've enjoyed in battleships in the last couple of weeks has to do with people just being at closer ranges like this. Um, in random battles, try to hit people at 20 plus kilometers. It's pretty difficult. You have a long lead time. 10, 15 seconds of time for someone to dodge or avoid your shells. That's assuming you have good dispersion on top of that at those far ranges, which is certainly not guaranteed. Um, maybe that's one of the reasons that I've enjoyed some more accurate salvos and had some more consistent games in my battleships. So I've just been able to play a lot closer. I found that as soon as I tried to push in like I have been in these airship escort games into random battles, it died very quickly. That was a big wake-up call as I played yesterday, actually, some random battles. I noticed that I just got into this habit of playing very aggressively, looking for flanking opportunities, and taking them any time I possibly could. There we go, Citadeling a Lepanto. That's pretty rare, I gotta say. <laughs> so we'll take it, I guess. Um, but yeah, my playstyle really did change over one month. It's kind of surprising uh, how quickly I got used to it and was able to capitalize on some of these flanks. You can see we have a totally open flank here, ready to push in. And because the airship is the primary target, it seems like a lot of people just focus on that particular square of the map and they don't really notice what's coming up their flank. Another good salvo, not quite a Citadel, but hey, 170K already, two kills and uh, plenty more to come. Not really going to go after the Lepanto here. I'd love to kill the Nebraska specifically because those planes can be very deadly over this island. They're very good at hunting out our remaining destroyers as well. So I'd much rather deal with the Nebraska first rather than the Lepanto. It's also a little easier to Citadel in Nebraska, I think. Uh, and we do some really solid damage into them. And we do have to be careful here with this flank where we don't get to deal enough damage in time. That's oftentimes what would lose games for me if I tried some of these flanks, especially on the spawn side where the airships start. Uh, I'd often be a little bit too late to impact the battle towards the end of the airship's route. And it's starting to look like that from here as well. You notice how quickly the airships are able to go. 18 knots here is not particularly fast, but Assuming we're maneuvering, dodging a little bit, you know, our Montana's only gonna be going 25 knots or so, something like that. So not the fastest in the world. So it's very easy to lose track of a game while you're playing on this flank. So I have to be very aggressive here, trying to get into some of the action, trying to take out low HP targets. That's really what it comes down to here as well. Pushing across this open water here is very difficult for our teammates that are in our airship circle. So we do have to try and help them as much as we can. A Shimakaze, though, pops up on the minimap very briefly in front of us, which is kind of terrifying since I have to push in aggressively here if I want to help my team win. And we're pushing into a Shima, which is never a good time in a battleship. And he actually managed to take out our Harukamo, so we're not really going to have much support here. So really, I'm hoping that the Shimakaze is going to dump all his torps here in a panic as we do actually spot him. We actually get close enough to spot him out. And then we're going to turn in very aggressively to try and avoid as much as we possibly can. And just like that, we've taken out a couple more ships with our team. Both Kerfers managed to go down. That's a lot of brawling threat that is taken away, which is really, really nice. Stuck with AP this time, trying to get a few more damaging hits in. See, 2,700 damage out of two hits. Very consistent, although it would have been nice to finish off the Shima here. Maybe if I was in an Ohio, our secondaries would have done a little bit of something there. But a Shimikaze is actually shooting with his guns, and he manages to finish him off for us. That really, really frees up this flank for us to hopefully win this game. Lepanto again going broadside. This is the wonderful thing about flanking. People are forced to give someone broadside. So either this Lepanto stays broadside to my entire team, or he gives me broadside. And it just so happened that this game, everybody gave me broadside. <laughs> so I'll take it. I will definitely take it. Um, unfortunately for us though, this game could very well easily be a loss since the enemy Kiev will take out the Shimakaze. And if he is able to stay in that zone for long enough, 
and we could very easily lose this on their airship just making it to the exit even though we are definitely up on kills at this point and a lot of hp we're just not in the right position that is the weakness of the flank like we talked about a little bit earlier Agir taking a bit of a risky turn here turning away it's probably what he had to do though considering he was pushing into a lot of my teammates back guns only and there's our citadels nice and consistent there out of the back guns uh, so 276,000 damage we actually do manage to catch up to the Kiev our Mecklenburg rushed in and managed to spot him out I think that it would have been possible for this Kiev to win if he had ambushed the Mecklenburg on the island I was kind of talking about this um, while the game was going on uh, five hits 6,000 damage though out of the HE we would have done more with armor piercing again <laughs> oh that's so disappointing uh, but hey we did at least a decent amount of damage, and our teammates are going to finish him off. But I wonder if that Kiev had ambushed the Mecklenburg on the island, killed him, and then gotten away. I don't think anybody would have been able to spot him. Um, but it was a very close game. Nonetheless, we had to do a lot of work to bring this one into our team's favor. Six kills always feels pretty amazing. And man, I just miss this game mode. As for the build here on the Montana, I'm really not changing anything when I'm going back to random battles. Um, for Airship Escort, I was also using this build right here. It's a very standard tank build these days. I'm trying to go for as much survivability, concealment as possible. And then on the equipment, of course, since we're an American battleship, we're taking artillery plotting room. Even though the, the games are relatively close range in uh, those Airship Escort modes, I still would rather have the accuracy over main battery mod um, for reload here. I just enjoy that a little bit more. Um, we're taking turret traverse though, since it's very nice to have in those closer quarters scenarios, and there's really not much else to take here. I don't really recommend trying secondaries on Montana, they're much worse than Ohio. Longer reload, and uh, much worse dispersion as well. Uh, so, really, really can't recommend that. The artillery plotting room 1 can be useful in random battles, considering how passive they are, but that's going to be the build um, for the Montana. But real quick, before I go, I should just mention here um, some of the builds that I was running on my Kerr First or Ohio, something like that, where I was focused on close quarters combat since I was usually able to have people within secondary range, even if it was just someone on the other side of an island giving me that 10% reload buff. Random battles, that's not really going to happen. So <laughs> we're switching over uh, to Concealment Expert, um, of course, taking Fire Prevention, so that's going to be what I'll be doing on most of these battleships. You see, I haven't actually done that on Ohio yet. I'll just switch it over to Concealment, um, possibly even Emergency Repair Expert on the Ohio, just because of that fast cooldown uh, heal. But yeah, a little disappointing to see Airship Escort go. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed this one. Really crushed some people with the Montana. That always feels good. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.